Welcome back everyone to today's latest series of builds from your one and only hero. Today we have an absolutely fantastic build using the ever so popular Heart of Inmost Light Exotic with a Void 3.0 and that will cover you on all grounds in terms of difficulty, content and challenges you will face. If you enjoyed my last titan build that used your midi to gain back super energy and create tons of worlds in the making, then you'll love this as it's an upgrade from that but more varied. Really simple build that anyone can create and with his ability to cool down everything at a rapid pace, you'll never be without any ability energy for long periods. Forget Traveller's Chosen or Monte Carlo, this build right here would take what makes the exotic amazing and simplify it here. But before we head in, if you enjoyed today's content then do leave a like, a sub and turn on your notifications as it really does help me out. So starting with the subclass, we will be running with Sentinel Shield as we plan on making full use of the Void Detonators and constant healing that will come out of it. From here, this will be combined with the Offensive Bulwark aspect as this will provide us an increase in grenade recharge time, increased melee damage and range, and melee final blows extend over shields and we will get 2 extra shield throws while in our super. This one aspect will allow us mobile heart of inmost light traits and further decrease the cooldown needed for all of our abilities since grenades will be used to trigger the vast amount of fights. You will then want to have controlled demolitions aspect where your void abilities will leave a void detonate on combatants and those killed by it will spread its effects and damage further. This will be very handy for fitting out the combatants that surround you as you will never run low on the amount of time you can do this. It will also trigger the health regen for me and my team so extra survivability will be key for all. The fragments you will then want to have Echo of Explosion which will cause targets to explode from void ability kills. The Echo of Leeching will merely find a blow start health regeneration for you and nearby allies. The Echo of Persistence which will increase the duration of void buffs applied to you so for example overshields will be extended by a few extra seconds. And Echo of Instability will grant you volatile rounds to your weapon. What we're trying to aim for is to make sure the build is flowing smoothly enough so that we don't die so easily, but you're also able to rapidly cool down our abilities from one build to another. Instead of relying on key exotic weapons or perks to do everything for us, we can in fact ignore them and use something else that won't be breaking away from the current build as shown. Now to fully make it flow correctly, I have 90 in discipline, 70 in strength, and 50 in resilience, which should be enough to chain my abilities and cause half in this light to react. I have also added in the Elemental Orders mod so I can create wells via my grenades and this will then be supported by Bountiful Wells which will grant me 2 wells instead of 1. We also have the Elemental Armors mod so that my void based weapons can create wells in the process in case I do run out of grenades and ability energy in general. And then lastly we then have Well of Tenacity for a 50% damage reduction and Energy Vampire which is a new artifact mod that will give us energy to our lowest ability as long as we suppress them. If you know straight away that I have suppression grenades, then well done for noticing as this will play a big part in jumpstarting our abilities. Adding everything together allows users to have an easier time of activating their abilities one after another when one stat is incredibly low. You can supplement this with Traveller's Chosen as the interaction between the two is very strong but even then you can avoid that entirely as the following setup can support itself without the use of additional perks. As long as you create wells which are your biggest benefactor then you'll be completely fine from here on out. So now this leads us to the weapons and everything here is down to content and player's choice. Ideally you will need a void weapon to activate your elemental armaments but if you're not using that mod then any other weapon is fine. I'm currently sticking with using the funnel web SMG with substance and journey and junkie as the power combos match well and with a void based build spec heavily into grenades it only makes sense to use something that matches the flow of the build well. It's also further supported by the Echo of Instability Fragment which will make our shots turn volatile for a few seconds. With Substitutions, Element Armaments and the Fragments combined, you get a full Auto Graviton Lance which can create wells as you go and is a perfect non-stop destructive beam. If you're having a tough time getting a weapon, then Shuyo's Wrath is another great weapon to use or even any void based weapon can be used no matter what range they play in. For our secondary, we then have the Pardon Our Dust Grenade Launcher with Autoloan Holster and Vorpool, a great backup weapon to bring when you want to do a really good decent amount of damage against mages and above. With Spike Grenades as a perk and Vorpool giving us that extra kick against mini bosses to bosses, we won't have to worry so much about using our heavy to take out such combatants. Only downside the weapon is needing to know how to properly use the weapon but that's something you can learn over time. 
Alternatively, the new Haki Shotgun has been a great contender with taking out high level combatants and it's definitely something you don't want to miss out on. For Heavy, we then have the Deathbringer Rocket Launcher which is something I haven't used since the day it got released. Although it's not the most powerful rocket launcher around, it's absolutely great at taking out large groups of combatants of all types in 1-2 hits. Its crowd control option is brilliant for use against bosses in the arenas when there's not so much cover around. Even shooting at directly at a boss would do some immense damage, although it's recommended you shoot above their head to get the most out of the damage. If you swap out the armors mod for the front of might mod for that 25% damage increasement for void weapons, you'll get some hefty damage that should be enough to one shot champions or take them down just enough to finish them. For stats, we have three key areas to look at because of how hard Imus Light requires us to use it. We have Discipline, Strength and Resilience, all that are relatively good levels for providing feedback after one ability is used and the next one can follow up. Ideally, you want to have one ability at its highest stat to start off with and make sure that stat is the key one you'll be using at all times. From shown, you can see that my discipline stat is at 90 cooldown and this will act as a catalyst to trigger the mass cooldowns from here on out. I've made sure I have enough mods available that will make sure that this stat is pumping 24-7 including our subclass perks, for example, elemental ordnance and bountiful wells which will be used to create wells which grant us energy back alongside the energy vampire mod. I'll further support it by adding in the distribution mod which will cover the three main stat cooldowns as well of discipline. With how well presented the subclass Exotic is, you can leave it there as the cooldown will be rapid and generally you can just go from there. You'll then also have your strength stat which I have mine at 70. The same thing as discipline, this will be the second relied upon ability you'll be using so this should be also as high as possible. If you can reach 80 just for the insurance then aim for it, but if not then don't worry as we have alternatives. The Kinetic Siphon mod will be working alongside the Invigoration mod so that every time I create an Orb of Power, I'll get back some mini energy doing so. Now adding on the Radiant Light mod for that plus 20 strength and that should cover you in all areas. And then lastly we have Resilience at 50 and honestly this can be enhanced through armor mods alone since it currently recovers quite fast at 50 and above. And when you add in worlds to the mix then that should be pretty much all you need. Left with a wise, we have the Momentum Transfer mod for faster mini cooldown, a Thermal Shot Plating for increased defense against Arc and Zero damage, and Rocket Launcher the Scavenger mod for increased rockets when you need it. This should cover all the key mods that you need, so now here are the Kapawa list into one to make it easier to take notes. For Head, we have Minor Strength, Harmonic Siphon, Ashes of Ashes, and Battle World mod. Arm, we have Discipline, Fastball, Momentum Transfer, and Elemental Orders mod. Chest with Discipline, Thermal Shot Plating, Percussive Dampener, and Element Armors mod. Leg we have Discipline, Rocket Launcher Scavenger, Invigoration and Radiant Light mod. Mark we have Energy Vampirism, Distribution, and Well of Tenacity mod. With Heart of Inmost Light, it's one of the most relied upon exotics to use if you don't have a build in mind and want quick cooldowns without investments or just need something quick to apply to. No matter what you do, you can add this onto whatever subclass you have in mind and just go from there with little effort involved. Which is why I recommend you take note of the following build as you can use the example for when Arc and Solo 3.0 become a thing. As presented, the build has a rapid cooldown upon rapid cooldown layered into it to make sure you're getting the right amount of energy back. The new fragments and artifacts have helped with push my million grenade cooldown from simply getting an overshield and from here we then have the mods that will enhance one of these key areas to further push its limits. Thanks to the elemental wells and their energy bonuses, we can pick and choose what weapon types or additional mods we like to add further to the build without changing too much of the setup. For example, I have elemental armors attached but this can be swapped for frontal wisdom for increased super cooldowns or swap for frontal might for increased weapon damage. We could even extend our mod's duration by slotting in the time dilation mod so that we can have volatile rounds to last longer. Simply put it, no matter what subclass you have in mind, whether void, solar, arc or stasis, this same loadout can be used for those as well. Currently the build plays out pretty well for all content in mind and has high survivability rate if you plan to take on the more challenging content solo. I would recommend as a final adjustment to try and get your resilience as high as possible as compared to everything else this one stat does cool down a lot faster compared to your grenades or melee and it's very noticeable. If you can get to 70 at best you'll be pre-covered from here on out. 
How you deal with the build is now up to you, but Void 3.0 has made using Exotic a lot of fun for endless abilities, and I cannot wait to see how Ark and Solo comes out in the near future. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with new changes. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.